Have you ever wondered why kidney disease is often detected late? Let's answer that question now and follow it up with what we can do to prevent kidney disease. This video is made on request. My heart goes out to everyone who has lost a loved one to kidney disease. May God comfort you. Now, back to the question. Why is it detected late? The very first thing is that the kidneys are a paired organ. For the kidneys and some other organs that are two, when one is going bad, we may not know because the other one is compensating for the bad one. So by the time you know that there is kidney disease, both of them are almost gone. That is number one. Number two is that from the beginning of kidney disease, to the end stage when that person needs kidney replacement or dialysis there are only five stages and by the time they begin to show symptoms of any sort they are already at an advanced stage either stage four or stage five at that time about 50 percent of the kidney functions have been lost the third one is that the symptoms of kidney conditions might be vague in the beginning and they are like symptoms of other conditions and usually they don't include pain. You know when people have pain, they are quick to tell somebody or to go to the hospital to report it. But when there is no pain, a lot of people ignore the symptoms. Another one is that it is progressive. Once chronic kidney disease starts, it progresses. Unless a person is doing something like, you know, getting adequate medical attention, when that progression is slowed down. And the last is that we don't routinely screen for kidney disease. We only screen for kidney disease in people who have risk factors for it. So what are the symptoms? Let's quickly talk about the symptoms. They can have shortage of blood and that makes them to feel tired or the tiredness or fatigue can come as a result of excess waste in the body. The waste that the kidney is supposed to clear and are not clear. Yes, that person now begins to feel weak. They can have hiccups, they can have confusion, talk irrationally, they can vomit, and sometimes they have swelling, leg swelling, swelling of their face or other parts of the body. And sometimes you see blood or protein in their urine. And lastly, they can also have urinary symptoms. You see that the urine is foaming or the urine is discolored or the urine is not even produced very well. By the time the person has the symptoms, the disease or the condition is already advanced. So prevention is always better than watching out for the symptoms. If we want to know how to prevent kidney disease, then we must know what causes it. Number one is high blood pressure that is poorly treated. A lot of people do not know that they have high blood pressure and that's because they don't check. Others that check or that know that they have may not want to treat it because they feel that once they have started the medications, they won't be able to stop. But unfortunately, it is damaging the internal organs, including the kidneys, and can result in kidney failure. Number two is diabetes that is also poorly managed. Some people that have diabetes cannot adhere to the dietary advice. And if you don't focus on your diet as a diabetic, you might not get your sugar controlled. That can also damage your kidneys. Excess cholesterol is another. And some people introduce toxins to their body that can damage their kidneys. We call them nephrotoxins. These nephrotoxins include NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. They are painkillers mainly, and people abuse them. They get back from construction work and their body is cleaning them, they quickly take some. They get back from uh, the market, they are tired, they quickly take two. Other toxins are recreational drugs, tobacco, or excess intake of alcohol. And those that take herbs indiscriminately. Uh, I said indiscriminately because it is not all herbs that are bad. You know that even some of the medications that we use in orthodox medicine are derivatives of Chinese herbs. Yes, they are taken from Chinese herbs. So herbs are not outrightly condemned. For example, look at hibiscus flower, what we use for Zubo drink. It is a herb and it is very good for hypertensive patients. But the herbs that we are talking about are those ones that people hawk around in bottles and then they take mixtures. They mix all forms of colors and consistencies, you know. So people just 
got them down without knowing that some of these things can damage the kidneys. So we want to be careful. Another thing is infections that are poorly treated or managed. It could be uh, a kidney infection, it could also be a throat infection or any other infection for that matter. If it is poorly treated, it can end up causing uh, kidney damage. Another thing is not drinking water. There are people who own up to not liking water. They tell you they don't like to drink water. Well, that's not a good thing because it can first start with kidney stones and in the end, it can damage the kidneys. So chronic dehydration is another cause. And lastly, aging, the older we get, the more likely uh, we get a decline in kidney function. So if that person now has other risk factors, then the kidney disease can progress uh, very fast. Now, how do we prevent them? Number one is that we should focus on hydration. Everybody should drink water well, two to three, three liters of water every day for good hydration. And check your blood pressure to be sure that you are not hypertensive. And please, if you are hypertensive, take your medications. Management of hypertension is with lifestyle modifications and treatment with medications. So get to see a doctor who will guide you as to what to do. If you have diabetes, please treat it. If you do not have it, go and check because you may have, but it is not diagnosed. And if you have any infection, please do not do uh, self-medication. Let a doctor take charge of that and treat you. Do not take medications from your friends. Do not buy medications indiscriminately in the market and start taking painkillers. And don't take toxins into your body. Don't smoke. If you smoke, please, you have to stop. And those that take recreational drugs, they have to stop. Those that drink alcohol should do that in moderation and we should avoid indiscriminate use of herbs. And it is important for everybody to do regular medical checkup. Make it an annual thing. Do it once in a year. Yes, schedule it, see a doctor, and do all of the tests that, you know, can help us to detect whether there is anything going on in your body. So finally, we want to talk about the food we need to avoid to, to protect our kidneys, to make them healthy. One of them is any food that has high sodium content and those meats that are processed, refined sugar, refined carbohydrates, sugary drinks, and food that is high in fat. So we want to increase fatty fish, legumes, grains, green leafy vegetables, and berries especially, you know, all berries they will protect your kidneys. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped. You can now see that focusing on prevention of kidney disease is always better than a cure because by the time one knows that they have kidney disease, they already have an advanced disease. And in addition, the cost of treatment is extremely high. Not many people can afford it. And they also experience a lot of discomfort with the treatment of chronic kidney disease. So that is the reason we should all focus on prevention. So share this with everyone you know, so that together we can save lives. And do not forget that good health is great wealth. We will guard it jealously by doing everything we can to keep ourselves healthy. Thanks for watching once again. See you next week, God willing. Until then, please be good. Bye.